Hello and welcome to this video tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how to use one of these, a digital SLR to take more professional images. Now regardless of if you're a professional photographer, an aspiring photographer or just have your own digital SLR, it's a great idea for you to learn how to use your camera's manual settings because I promise you once you do it will transform your images. Now if you're used to going out with your SLR and sticking to your camera's automatic settings, one thing I'm absolutely confident you're going to have found is that your camera is very often going to either under or overexpose, which means that your images are going to be either really light or your camera is going to record images that are really dark. Uh, another really common thing using your camera's automatic settings, especially once you start shooting in low light conditions, is noise. You're going to get a lot of camera noise. Now this is fine if you're doing normal family photography, but if you are trying to start taking more professional pictures, this is a big problem that you need to understand how to counter. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the camera that I'm going to be using in this tutorial to demonstrate everything I'm going to teach you. The camera I'm using is a D7000. This is a Nikon model. Um, and just be aware that if you are using a, cam a Canon, uh, an Olympus, a Sony, if it's not a Nikon camera, then things will vary. But generally, the, the basic concepts, principles, how to use everything, you know, your shutter speed, aperture, is all the same. But it is going to be represented slightly differently. Now, if you do have a Nikon camera, don't worry. It's going to be exactly the same regardless of what model you're using. Now, on a Nikon... Your camera's manual modes are represented on the dial that you can find, there we go, uh, right here. Okay, so your camera's manual modes include, well, are represented on this dial using an M, an A, and an S. Now, to basically tell you what they mean, you have M obviously stands for manual mode. This enables you to actually have full control over everything. That includes your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO and everything else. Your, the A stands for aperture priority. This basically means that you can control your camera's aperture, but the shutter speed is going to be controlled for you automatically. You, then you have the S, which stands for shutter priority, which basically means you can manually control your camera's shutter speed, and the camera will sort out your aperture for you. So basically the M is full manual and the A and S are basically semi-automatic. Um, now, before I can really explain how to use these things, I need to explain what aperture and your shutter speed and your ISO actually are. And I'm also going to link this to depth of field, which is something else which is going to be really handy for you to understand. Now, to start off, let's start with aperture. Because what your aperture is, is basically represented on the back of your camera as an F number. Now, depending on what lens you have, the general, what it will probably be is probably range between 5.6 or 5.3 and F22. Now, depending on your F number, you need to understand that in your lens here, what you have is a series of mirrors that basically just reflects light until it eventually hits the back of your camera, hits your sensor, and records the image. That's a very... Now, in your, sen in your, in your camera's lens, what you have in is, is an iris. Now, this iris basically opens and it closes. And depending on your F number, depends on the state of your iris. So how wide open it is. So basically, the smaller the F number, let's say 5.3, your iris is going to be wide open, which means that it's going to allow the maximum amount of light to pass through. Now, the larger the F number, so let's say F22, the, it, the, the iris is going to close down, and it's, going to, and it's going to let the minimum amount of light through. Now, what, what does this mean? How does this affect things? Basically, what this affects is your camera's shutter speed. What this affects is your camera's depth of field. Okay. Now, the two types of depth of field you can have is either a large depth of field or a shallow depth of field. Now, to explain what these are, a shallow depth of field, let's imagine that you have a picture of a flower. A shallow depth of field is when you have the flower, 
in the center of the image in very very sharp focus and everything behind the flower is out of focus is blurry that's a shallow depth of field another example would be a portrait of let's say a, a lion's face the lion is in sharp focus everything behind is out of focus is blurry now a large depth of field is when the maximum amount of the everything in your field of view so everything that you see is in sharp focus regardless of where it is in the picture everything should be sharp now this is controlled by your aperture so basically a, a smaller f number so let's say 5.6 is going to give you a shallow depth of field so you, it's like using the, the example of the flower everything in the back is going to be out of focus the larger the f number so let's say f22 the Lar the wider, the larger depth of field you're going to have, so everything is going to be in sharp focus. Now the only problem with this is that the larger the F number, you're going to close down your iris, which means less light is going to pass through. But although light is still passing through, you still need the same amount of light to hit your sensor to record your image. Now because this is going to be shut down, less light is going to pass through, it needs to be open for longer, okay, um, for enough light to hit your sensor, okay. So, let's say you're shooting on uh, 5.3, you could probably use a 60th of a second, but if you change that to f22, you know, especially in low light conditions, you might need 30 seconds or more to actually record your image because you need to allow enough light to pass through. Now the problem is, when you start using longer shutter speeds, you're going to find that every little movement and every shake is going to create noise, which is basically going to either make your image look really out of focus, or it's just going to create loads of blurry images, which is basically the same thing. This is where your ISO comes in. Your ISO is basically your camera sensor's sensitivity to light. And this could be anything from 100 to 1600 to 3200. Uh, you know, your, your camera's ISO can, can range from, you know, can, can be anything. Now, the higher your ISO, then regardless on your aperture, you can use faster shutter speeds, which is the good thing. But everything has uh, a flip side. And... The flip side of an ISO, which is high, let's say 3200, is you're going to get loads of what's called camera noise, which is basically fuzziness, um, which is terrible. And usually when you are a photographer, your main goal is to keep your ISO down. So you're usually going to want to try and shoot as much as possible on the, small, the smallest ISO possible because you, you don't want any noise because the more noise you have, the you're going to just lose image quality, which is, is just terrible. So what you generally going to find yourself doing when you are using longer shutter speeds is using a tripod because you can put your camera on the tripod, you can take, press the shutter button, you're going to release the shutter and you're going to just leave it on the tripod and you'll get no noise. So at this point in the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to actually understand your camera's LCD screen. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to explain on the D7000 is now regardless of what model you are using, the most important thing without a doubt that you have to worry about is your shutter speed and your aperture. Now my aperture is here, I can tell because the F, no the F number is here, so I've got this F number here that's 5.6 currently. And if I move my dial, you can see that it's increasing. So f11, let's take this back to f5.6. Here's my shutter speed. So if I move my dial, I can change my shutter speed. Now, regardless of, now as I explained previously, 5.6, my iris is fairly wide open. But how do I know what shutter speed to use? Well, I need to basically focus on this here, which is my light meter. It's built into the camera. Every SLR has one. And basically, I just have to move the dial that affects my shutter speed in either direction until uh, my camera is correctly exposed. 
and I can tell if it's correct if basically I'm aligned to the center. So I can tell that currently I'm correctly exposed. Now if I was to be um, if I was to have a longer uh, shutter speed here, I can tell this is this is not correctly exposed. And if I use this shutter speed with this aperture for this image, then I'm going to be extremely overexposed, which basically means I'm going to have a very bright image. Now, in the same way, if I move the dial in the opposite direction and I increase my shutter speed, um, I can tell that my image in this particular case with this aperture is going to be underexposed so the image is the sensor is not going to be um, not that basically not enough light is going to hit my sensor so basically I'm going to have a very dark image and as I said to correctly expose I simply have to get this in the center now right here as you can see it says ISO this is my ISO now let's just show you an example here. So if I was to increase my ISO, so let's change this to 1600. I can already see that it's changed my exposure. So let's correctly expose. And you can see that using this ISO of 1600, I can now shoot at a 25th of a second on 5.6. That's that's made a massive difference but what that's also going to do is it's going to create an extensive amount of noise so this is a great example of why you would want to use a lower ISO because although I'm going to have to use a uh, fairly slow shutter speed I'm not going to get any noise at all now as I said previously if I use a larger aperture so let's say I'm going to shoot this on f22 I suddenly need an even longer exposure because remember my eye, my iris in the camera has closed down which means I need to allow more time for enough light to hit my camera's sensor. Now the reason that even on uh, uh, let's say 5.6 I still need a fairly you know I have a fairly slow shutter speed here um, I, there's no way anybody could hand hold this now this is a, a, a sort of a bad example because right now I've got this camera set up on my table my desk so it's fairly low light conditions but if you take this outside and you're using f uh, 5.6 I guarantee you you're probably going to be shooting in the range of uh, probably around 50th of a second which is very very easy to hand hold and that's on an ISO of 100 so that's another very important point Generally, uh, shooting wildlife, though, what most uh, photographers would recommend doing is shooting on aperture priority, which is the main reason. Now, the, the main reason that you would shoot on aperture priority is because with wildlife, you generally don't have much time. Um, it's, it's, it's a really... Uh, with uh, wildlife photography you obviously have to react very quickly and you need to actually release the shutter and take that image as quickly as possible um, and the problem is if you're using cameras manual mode you have to take that time even if you preset the aperture to 5.6 the shutter speed is going to change so using aperture priority allows us to control the depth of field which is what I explained previously so you probably be shooting between f8 and uh, f5.6 but the camera is gonna take care of the shutter speed which is basically um, using the built-in light meter and to be honest with you that's absolutely fine some photographers just use aperture priority for everything because you're still controlling your f's your uh, your aperture which is the main thing of course also with aperture priority you can also control your ISO which is another very important point now finally you have your shutter priority and what this basically does is it enables you to set your cameras um, shutter speed manually um, let's say I want to use uh, 20 second or let's say f let's say 10 second uh, exposure here it's automatically setting the aperture for me um, that is correct for this 
the, the current uh, light levels that I'm exposing my camera to. So this is a very important thing. Now the reason that you might use a longer shutter speed is if you were for example shooting a stream and you wanted to create that beautiful smooth effect that we all love in photography when it comes to water um, basically eliminating all those ripples and it just creates a very sort of misty and atmospheric effect that is when you would use a longer shutter speed you might almost you the other time that you'd use a shutter speed which is longer is at night because as I said you need to allow more time to hit your camera's sensor to record the image alright so that's it that's everything I wanted to cover in this class but please be aware this is the first video of a series that I'm going to be doing on photography um, I hope that you've uh, basically learned uh, I try to cover as much as possible but keep things simple and give you good examples so just to round up I covered your camera's manual modes this is again this is on Nikon if you have a Canon or another brand it will vary but the basic principles of aperture shutter speed are the same depth of field ISO it's all the same it just looks a bit different and is represented a little differently on Canon uh, for example in particular now the uh, as I said I hope that you did learn something. Please uh, follow our channel, like the video, comment. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free. I'd love to help uh, you out. Thank you very much. Have a great day.